I welcome you all to Damru and I'm very excited to open yet another session of our annual yoga festival, Bilba 2022. I'm Mauli Bhaviska, founder and executive director of Damru Yoga and Sound Therapy Studio. And every year, Damru celebrates Bilba throughout the month of July and we choose different themes mainly related to the Indian yogic traditions and its knowledge systems and invite scholars from across the globe to share their knowledge with us. Last year, Bilba's theme was cultural appropriation of yoga and the necessity to embrace the inherent Indianness in the yogic tradition. This year, the theme of Bilba festival is uh, celebrating the teachings of the great teacher Sri T. Krishnamacharya and his holistic teachings in the KYM tradition as taught by his lifetime student and son, Sri TKV Desikachar. And as I announced this theme for this year's Bilba Yoga Festival, I also want to share that we are happy to announce a teacher training program in collaboration with Krishnamacharya Yoga Mandiram. And it is starting this September. And those of you who would want to join or would be interested in knowing more about this program, there's a short video clip that we are attaching after the end of this session, this talk. So you can go through that. Also, you can go through Damru's website and uh, see the details for yourself. Now, before I proceed to today's talk, let me also share a bit about Bilba. Uh, the Bilba festival that we conduct every year is conducted under the wing of Damaru Foundation. It is a public charitable trust founded with the aim to promote and implement traditional yogic sciences and increase awareness about wellness and harmony in that segment of the society who are in dire need of help for their holistic well-being but may not be able to afford it. So if you wish to support our efforts, do consider contributing to Damro Foundation. And you can find the link to the payment options in the description box below. Your contributions will help us support more such people and at the same time bring more of such valuable content and scholarly speakers from across the globe to share their knowledge with us. And while we're talking about Damro Foundation, today we have a very special guest who I will introduce his work to you all as we see him, but it is something very similar on the lines of which he's been working for almost a decade. So I very happily invite uh, Mr. Ramesh Karna. Welcome, sir. Welcome to the session. Namaskaram. Namaskaram. And uh, before I hand over the session to Ramesh, sir, let me briefly introduce him. P. Ramesh Kanna. He is a yoga teacher and has done his postgraduate diploma in yoga at the Krishnamacharya Yoga Mandiram. And uh, he's been associated with Mandiram since 2011. And since then, he has been working in therapy, uh, teaching yoga to children, yoga for homemakers, international students, corporate outreach programs of KYM, and uh, the special vertical of KYM, which is called the Mitra. Uh, this is a special, uh, they also run a Sunday special clinic. And Kanna sir actually is uh, associated with Mitra and has been teaching children with special needs. So uh, handling children and teenagers. And this has been happening for since 2013 and then till date actually is uh, working with that population, mostly autistic children. And this is something very special that he is doing, the Mitra wing of uh, KYM. It is a, a program where it is almost a no cost kind of a program where they reach out to those who may not be able to afford or those who are special populations. And like I said, mostly with autistic children, he works with them and there are certain milestones that they have been observing uh, in the appreciable behavioral changes that are observed in the participants of students. 
and uh, the level of acceptance amongst their parents because that's a big challenge and uh, when we say behavioral changes uh, those who are familiar with this population would know that these children have special nervousness and which would lead to uh, tantrums shouting or behavioral eye contact issues so with yogic interventions mr ramesh kanna has been working extensively with these children and seeing wonderful results so sir a very very special warm welcome to you you doing something which is very appreciable or close to my heart working with the special children so with this i offer the session to you sir yeah namaskar madam thanks for your introduction so uh can we go to the slides now as uh, man has been uh, introducing like uh, so uh, i have been now uh, with kym for some time from 2011 and uh, their experiences in the area of uh, therapy children's yoga yoga for home make uh, international students for great outreach uh, special children and uh, experience in the sense handling children and teens with the special needs from 2011 till date mostly it is with autistic uh, see the milestones uh, what what, what uh, we have uh, uh, achieved to what extent we have achieved uh, with this sort of conditions so with the students with these conditions so it's a uh, behavioral changes like absorb uh, uh, level of and uh, the acceptance of the parents once you see what is this uh, appreciable behavioral change so basically these students have a, a issue with eye contact uh, and there are a lot of tantrums shouting special uh, sort of uh, uh, they will not be able to control at times uh, with their uh, limbs and that sort of thing. So, uh, in these areas, we were able to bring some appreciable change. So, that we will uh, see in the later slides. <coughs> and here I have uh, one uh, crowd I have just mentioned, not to forget, because this <coughs> I would like to share. So one of the student, uh, after coming to KYM, and uh, uh, maybe for a year, uh, one and a half years, two years, that was a kind of duration in which he was uh, coming down to KYM and taking the classes each and every Sunday. Most of the Sundays, he used to come with his parents. And uh, um, one point of time, uh, maybe after a year or so, the parents. narrated a instance where uh, they went to tirupadi to have a darshan and you know the tirupadi means it's a huge it's a very long queue and uh, uh, duration also is there so they said he was uh, quite uh, not making any noise he was quite uh, like any other sort of uh, student uh, or the public it was no sort of uh, special management required so that uh, they were uh, so happy about uh, he was able to manage the crowd so in today scenario you are not alone whenever you go transport lot of places you have this crowd so he was able to manage the crowd so that was a uh, very good uh, uh, sort of response from the student with our and uh, one more thing uh, the student who come here also go for other therapies also uh, not only uh, to our uh, clinic uh, so uh, it is a sort of uh, uh, not because of one certain thing but it is because of accumulative sort of approaches okay the title 
is an insight on yoga for children with special needs and lower view. So this, when I spoke to Mauli Baveshkar, madam, so she gave me an idea that the audience would be a little bit with the background of yoga and willing to do some service or some sort of therapy or in this uh, uh, with the yoga as a tool. So keeping that in mind, uh, I am uh, trying to present her the slides. So first and foremost is uh, the God aspect and uh, the Guru whom we see and the faith in Guru. So, so with this sort of uh, um, aspects, we start and go forward in our uh, interventions. So I'd like to give my humble pranams to Kivayam, pranam to our Guru Krishnamacharya and Deshikachari and Damuru for giving this opportunity. Straight away, I'm getting into the subject of uh, conditions. So normally, the conditions that we see in special children are like uh, Downs, Cerebral Palsy, ADHD, OCD, ASD, Intellectual Disability, and Sensory Disorders. It's a huge, uh, uh, the conditions are so, uh, I mean, uh, it's a little bit not in a normal sense. It is all, uh, most of the things, a little bit with scientific approach and uh, with, uh, with the alternative approach. So this is a huge subject and each condition has a lot of uh, cause and symptoms uh, and the intervention uh, cycles. So what I try to do is classification. I'm trying to classify special needs students into two categories. The first category, those who are not able to express themselves with their feelings of joy, sorrow, pain, pleasure in measure considered by the society. Some of them would be abusing themselves, that is the repetitiveness in pain giving activity too. So their diet is very unusual and it is rare. So most of the time, rather than the student, parent, relatives, caregivers has to describe the conditions. So this is in uh, a little bit the other way. So we expect the, sub, the student to express their issues. But here, the student is not able to do that. And it depends upon the parents, care, givers, narrations. So um, going further, even in our normal environment, we come across many who do not recognize the spectrum. That is this ASD sort of spectrum. It could be in a lower degree on a higher degree and this and seek help so they do not recognize the spectrum and seek help so including me here but it is like sometimes we seek and sometimes we resist but with children of this asd sort of uh, thing it seems to be that the flux, there's no flux and it is present throughout the lifetime. The second category is like who are able to relate to the environment with appreciable measure as per society standards, flux still exists. Here you can even consider uh, 
Down's cerebral palsy because you can get a response. You will know. You can almost get get to know the cause, and you know the symptom, and you can do some sort of uh, resp- get some sort of response, but not in the first category. So this is a broad way of categorization which I have tried to do. And how is the approach? So here the approach is like uh, it, it, it is may high kind of approach because here the students are already going through a lot of trauma. We don't know. And uh, uh, they are uh, literally afraid of the surrounding environment. So anything which they are, uh, it comes as a surprise, uh, they go away. So bringing them to a point of contact itself is a challenge. So the May approach is like you wait for them to respond. You wait for them to um, get into your sort of uh, uh, space without with 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 little bit of positive and little bit of um, confidence uh, trust so this is more important when we start this uh, interventions and second is ahimsa ahimsa what we mean is if the student we have to respect their feeling whatever we we do maybe we are doing right or good for them but still if it is not the right time and this is not ready enough to take this sort of intervention we have to wait so this is also a pass passive sort of intervention all this comes into the intervention uh, levels and if any point of time they say no, we have to seriously take that as no. So that uh, they keep the trust in us and come back. And with all this thing, we have to request for approval, for permission, for any sort of uh, intervention. Those who seek, the other way, the, the other side is those who seek. It, it, the task becomes somewhat, uh, somewhat uh, uh, better. And uh, we normally, KYM, address the students, those who seek. It's a, not sort of uh, marketing or a sort of uh, thing. Those who seek, uh, we give them the full attention. And finally, blessings of Guru and God is more important. Whenever we start the class, we pray, we take the Guru's blessings, and we are only the instrument, and accept the presence. So this is the approach. And yoga for special children. Yoga itself is an experiential knowledge. And our skill and knowledge acquired to address the needs of special children is an experiential knowledge only. So, uh, it's not only based on the text or some templates or some sort of uh, listening. It is hands-on. So with the therapy students, one-to-one sessions. And here again, so we, the, when we start in doing the intervention, the learning is also is part of it. It's not only the intervention that we are doing it, 
the learning also happens. That's how I have found that. You are also learning. So you are evolving your procedures, your process in the intervention. And that is how we are our knowledge and uh, skill gets evolved. The foremost and the, the part of the one thing which we have to keep in mind is and the fear is uh, we should not become a victim. So here, not exactly the fear, uh, but the teacher should exist for the remedial. So what I mean here is, because this is something, um, uh, not only this, but for any sort of uh, area of uh, subject. Uh, if the golden line, I mean, is not, uh, if you're not made, if you're not able to maintain the golden line, either uh, we become complacent or uh, we become over enthusiastic. And uh, the result is uh, sometimes the teacher may not be able to identify the uh, conditions. So he may become the part of the condition. So this is very important uh, in addressing the students with this condition so that uh, they are able to sustain or uh, they are able to maintain their equibalance the golden line sort of approach. And in this journey, we will be aware of that we are nothing. Earnestly, we hold on to our God and Guru. So this journey uh, teaches us that we are nothing. So what we see in front of us is uh, quite a big challenge. And uh, only with the Guru God within us in the in the environment, uh, we are able to at least have some sort of angles. We are able to see some angles and uh, and try to work for the some betterment. Finally, then it is with the blessings things happen. I mean, with the gods and gurus blessing things happen. We are only the instrument. This is very important, the attitude. Yoga for special children, again, science, psychiatrist, sometime when we had some interaction, they used to say, they only know about 20% about the psyche. But they don't stop in treating the students. So they also tried and we also know the challenges are not so small but we also give a try but how there are many ways let's see so compassion is one word in which if you understand like uh, what is uh, it, what does it mean like right? When someone is under some lot of stress, pain, suffering, and just out of compassion, you try to address them, address to address them for any sort of comfort. This itself, when this sort of level is there, then you see that the, the fear is not there. The fear is not the fear is not there because of the environment because of the challenges in front of you you just work with compassion and with that you're uh, you're not concerned or uh, you're not concerned the uh, whether uh, it will be comfortable for us in this uh, thing or the pain, we'll get into the pain now mode. No, that doesn't hit at all. So you keep work and uh, 
with that sort of attitude or able to continue your remedial or your interventions or your healing process so that is you will see that that is a that is not an end there is no end like sort of thing or uh, starting and end you become a uh, little bit of uh, down no in practice we train to observe normally in yoga practice when you do the asana whatever from there to pratyahara pranayama and the observation is what we are doing like observing so this quality of observation opens the avenue of being in present being in present helps a lot in therapy and healing so the practice is very important to impart this sort of interventions the practice here in yoga what we say is the our personal practice seekers see when a student approaches with interest he may be there already more than half the way in the remedial process here what we are trying to see is if the seeker is themselves coming to you and asking for some help then half the way he has already crossed the process in the intervention on the positive side but in the case of the first category i mean the conditions where the seeker or the student or not not the seeker the student are not able to express themselves the pain it is a, a really a quite a big challenge so when we are talking about methods uh, we are talking about the uh, sense of center and periphery see this uh, the first category like uh, the conditions where you are not able to pinpoint the cause you have the symptoms so if you see the periphery or the not the center you'll be able to find a little bit of uh, vein so the approach could be center or periphery approach but to start with like when you start a yoga practice it is mostly with the gross physic asana practice then you go into the breath and slowly into the subtle levels so similarly when you address the issues you are talking about the periphery things which you can address and slowly getting into the center the method is like that. so with this method we have been uh, giving this uh, alternative uh, interventions of and uh, we have been meeting the students and the parents so you will see the students having a um, sort of symptoms uh, which uh, was there for which is there for some time like years to get and there is no relief maybe there is a relief on the periphery area but not on the areas which they wanted to like the expectations were. so the parents not the students but the parents get into a very gloomy sort of situations and that stress level psyche level and the physical level or also or on a stress so it is not only the uh, it is happening to the student uh, but also with the caregivers and the parents so it is important that uh, we the intervention is also the part of the intervention will be with for the parents as well as for the caregivers so that with some sort of appreciable results from the student and within them they get into a level of acceptance next is it is not typical like uh, in our day to day 
uh, activity where one expresses the issue and other gives a solution in a jiffy. Whether the offered solution is okay or not, but there is a speed. You will find there is a lot of speed. Tremendous speed. For a special need children to fit in the above environment is a mammoth challenge. So here we are talking about the, the general public, the environment, and the other side, the special children. So we try to communicate with the parents and caregivers so that uh, they try to understand the issue and accept the reality and manage and move on. It is not like you are not losing the hope. You have hope. And you also understand the limitations and the opportunities and the challenges. So wherever you can work, a small change also is a sort of uh, 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 very useful in terms of behavioral and when they deal with the people around, even a small change. And that's, we can build for that change into a changes in the other activities. Then here, I would like to also have a uh, this healing aspect of, because normally we say therapy interventions and uh, healing is also is one way of uh, uh, expressing the similar sort of uh, things happening here. The neutral person, the healer, that is a neutral person, unbiased person, who is kind of yogi sort of thing. The teacher who imparts therapy himself is an important tool. And yoga text emphasis more on maintenance of this tool, that is our self, so that it can be utilized for self-transformation and other associated benefits. So the healer is a uh, pay, plays a more important role in the interventions. How it happens that we we may not be able to exactly describe, but the most of the yogic text talks about how to cleanse ourselves. And so that uh, we ourselves are able to move forward for a spiritual transformation. And in the journey, there are associated benefits which we get. And those can be shared with the society, with the environment. So the practice and the discipline going by the yogic text, guru, mentors are very important for getting a progress. So healing, again, there are two aspects. One is doing and happening. Even in breath component, you'll see the breath is happening by itself. But when you try to consciously inhale and exhale, you find the doing aspect. So these are the two aspects we try to recognize in our daily activities also. One is the doing aspect, another is the happening aspect. So normally, the happening aspects, we don't, I mean the credits are not so we are not focusing on the credits. Have perseverance, perseverance, keep trying at appropriate time it happens. I mean, the healing, the sort of results, positive results, it happens. You are just like there, like any other one else in the free. So there is nothing which changes or something which builds up 
around inside i mean uh, uh, physically for others to observe or it, it you are just like anyone else in the frame but the healing happens and uh, the three things like silence smile and humor it helps us to have a, a sustain the journey it is good for us as well as for the environment uh, clinical diagnosis see normally in um, sort of uh, autism sort of thing will come to that also we have one uh, institute called nitmed in chennai so they have a very good facility for diagnosis clinical diagnosis for uh, because lot of sensory also we find that there is a sensory issues with the uh, special kids so earlier intervention and earlier diagnosis is very important and this sort of uh, institutes uh, play a important role like uh, for they have a clinical diagnosis for deaf and blind visual impairment or visual uh, and then cerebral palsy and uh, if you see each one of us may have a percentage of disability but the ability to manage brings about the difference in engaging with the environment and being normal and abnormal this is to say that uh, we are not um, out of that uh, sort of uh, set we are inside the set but the percentage varies so so that the inclusiveness is there they are not so I, they are not different they are one among us in, in yoga diagnosis, we have this sort of diagnosis in KYM, Dashanam, that is perceived observation. By visual observation, you try to get in the things. And Sparshanam, perceived examination, again, here, you, with the approval, you try to touch and see for some for some sort of examinations and the third one is the prashnam interview where you start asking them for some sort of exact symptoms and some causes which they come to know about it. so in yoga diagnosis we take these three aspects before going into intervention So Center for Special Children, uh, you have uh, various NGOs and trust and uh, we have been working with uh, many and to name few is Amar Seva Sangam in uh, Tenkasi. Mr. Ramakrishna is the founder of that and BBSN is in Chennai and Avayuhum in Chennai and many more. So we go to that place and take teach yoga for special need children. This is under Mitra project. And don'ts is very important. It is foremost and important to list out the don'ts for specific condition. Whenever we approach a condition, we, fix, we, we try to uh, list out the don'ts so that, so that the safety is being taken care of. The student progresses But the regression aspect has been addressed. He is not regressive. So this is more important. The don'ts. So intervention is like uh, bringing a positive response to our stimuli in whatever degree possible will be our goal in intervention. So we give a stimuli and we a positive re response. Uh, a degree can be of any degree. I mean, even a small response uh, could be our uh, short time goal. Initially, catching hold of this sort of small responses and making it stronger and building a sort of conduit uh, around this uh, um, uh, achievements. Uh,
will take us to a different progressive and different uh, positive levels. And whatever the progress which has been achieved, it is important to reinforce this sort of things and not to lose like immediately because if there is a chance that uh, the regression happens uh, suddenly. The student may not come to a few classes or some problem in their uh, uh, domestic thing somewhere. So then uh, it becomes difficult for us to again start from A like sort of thing. So uh, the reinforcement uh, aspect in between should be done so that uh, the regression is not so deep. And the whole process, students experience the this process like uh, whatever he goes through. Then only it makes uh, a sort of a memory sort of impression and a progression that means the student in the process and to the and to the extent of giving acceptable responses degree may vary so um, the student is in the process and he is able to observe himself and appreciate the progress he himself so that is a, a, an important aspect the trust and uh, the progression gives him a lot of interest in the practice. The new network of habit created in one task is replicated in the other task, thereby overall consolidation. This we'll see in the, again in the next slide. So we are trying to see one condition, autism. Causes will be lifestyle these are all maybe causes like these are not uh, they have not uh, really say that this is the cost like lifestyle could be a cause genes difference of opinion between the husband and wife corals lot of corals early part of the marriage abuse at the time of consumption child delivery related issue so here, uh, after the child uh, seems to be normal, maybe uh, three months, four months, but in, from the six months on, onwards, there that, that seems to be some sort of uh, uh, indications. So this is where the parent should be very aware. Like uh, if there is a still some sort of uh, symptoms are there, which are not normal, um, it is uh, it is better to take for a clinical diagnosis. The clinical diagnosis is before the age of three is normally is helpful, but after which the intervention does not yield desired results. So that is what uh, the research data tells about. Like. So uh, the early intervention and the diagnosis is very important so that uh, there is a real progression in the therapy. The symptoms we are, is uh, poor eye contact, spatial awareness, uh, there is no any awareness while walking on the front, uh, rear, sides, sensitive due to sound, even small sound, they are not able to bear, making noise, speaking difficulty, easily gets disturbed, resists new construction, they are in their own world. They, have, they are in their own world. So here we are trying to see one small symptom like uh, feeble fingers. So it's it's not a, a it, I mean, on the periphery. Since they are not so active in using that limbs, uh, the fingers are a little bit feeble. So we try to give nyasam, one of the two. Nyasam is touching, pressing, moving fingers. What are the takeaways like? Touch. There is a touch field, touch, there is an experience. Orderliness, one finger to other, there is some order from one to other. Count, you have to be there, maybe touch the finger, count three times, three counts, one, two, three, like that. There is a progression in counts. Sound. You make some sounds, 
my own or sound which is uh, suitable for the particular student the auditory also comes into play visual you see your finger your visual comes into play hearing the instructions hearing the instruction press your finger move your finger there is a following the instruction repetition to do the things again in a manner which you learned so here the memory comes in so with all the sort of things you create a new habit a new network a positive habit so this is what happens and reinforcing this sort of thing by reinforcing this by doing it number of times so the regular practice reinforces this network the result is the more control in fingers thereby increase confidence in handling task so this one network and uh, activity they are able to take this sort of learning to other tasks and try to replicate it so the consolidation happens it is not that you do only for finger you do for finger it happens in other areas also and slowly we go into the movement with the breath and little bit of calmness still so this also we try to bring in so that uh, the student is also learning relaxing willing to learn more and in in these also experiencing the learning process also one more important thing for special children is the food and association food is very important for everyone because what you eat what you are so here the students are very particular about the color texture of the food and there are also that we we should avoid few food is also one criteria for the special children so food aspects a real care should be taken what should be given what should not be given so that it helps in the progression uh, intervention in the therapy in the healing process so sometimes it may trigger and uh, the regressions happens also and next part of the association so uh, the association you know is very important the good association brings uh, uh, need not worry about lot of things when good people are around you good things are around you good uh, need not worry about other things so here also maybe this students you have to see the environment where they are like uh, if the parents uh, they have some issues maybe you uh, take some time and try to do some uh, counseling or they need to have a se separate session somewhere so that uh, that portion is also addressed and uh, the school where they go and where they play so people i mean the parent and the caregivers should take care of uh, the association and the environment also so that uh, this variables gives a progression in the therapy so here we uh, sometimes uh, they can be with the paid groups like uh, the similar sort of uh, special children uh, we can see there is a competitiveness happening when they are when the paid groups that is the special children with among them when you observe you can see the competitiveness that is very Uh, i mean uh, 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 somewhat a uh, 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 surprise in normal condition they don't express this sort of competitive thing but when they are among themselves they are open their confidence increases they see others a lot of things are happening there when it becomes a normal group sometimes it is little bit uh they get into the anxiety mode by seeing their performance and sometimes the bullying uh, things are on uh, make them to go to a sort of corner 
sometimes just to see the experience, the normal group can be um, exposed. And pets also can be with the with their associates, can be with them, but with the safety. So the conclusion, what we are trying to bring out is in the first category, dealing with the intervention of common sense approach and understanding is not needed. So the bigger sort of challenges can be break down into small and simple things. Uh, just to look some other areas like uh, outlook, uh, gender bias was there in a lot of fields and that was challenged, challenged and the present uh, we are witnessing progressive activity attitude i mean about the male and female gender where the female should go where they should not go or what they should do what in what way they should not do a lot of things were there that was oh that was uh, that has been challenged and uh, uh, you can see a lot of progression progression is there in that uh, uh, areas so similarly we should have the courage to address the this uh, category i mean the condition, special children condition in an inclusive manner and in a common platform. Just when you go to an hospital, there should be a counter to address this issue. So uh, uh, any anywhere for that matter, there should be some sort of uh, infrastructure for that. So we are hearing a lot of advanced process and infra that has been put in other nations. More or less, they have addressed the issues in one way or other. In other nations, we have seen we are, we are hearing that they have a lot of infrastructure for this sort of students and uh, 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 the parents, uh, the siblings of the society, uh, there is uh, much, not much of a uh, pain. So they have addressed it a sort of. So we should uh, challenge the dogmas prevailing in our society that are so, so here the dogmas uh, which are surrounding this sort of students, like right? Th those should be uh, uh, challenged so that the students live with dignity and their livelihood is supported and ensured and the safety is taken care of. Yes, the ground reality is not so encouraging but try to compensate like uh, if you are not able to bring out about a change in one uh, in, in one of the aspects uh, uh, try to compensate try to compensate by some time so that you take time and address the issue later on also. But we have to compensate. And uh, on conclusion, one more uh, uh, from Patanjali Yoga Sutra, Sadhana Pada, Jnana Ye Ya Ha Thad Pratyaha. However, when there is evidence of that obstacles are re reappearing immediately, advance towards a state of reflection to reduce their impact and prevent them from taking over. Any means that will help us free ourselves from the consequences of these obstacles is acceptable. This could be a prayer, discussion with a teacher or a diversion. So here, the thing is, if you are a pain and um, you realize it, uh, and if you, uh, it could be anything, you any means, you try hold, try to hold, get hold of it, and try to come out of it, so that uh, um, uh, you you are not in the, I mean, um, regression. Any means that will help us to free ourselves from the consequences of the obstacles is acceptable. So we have to find the ways and means, uh, not stuck. Uh, so let us be the torch bearers for these students. I mean, the upcoming the audience who are eager in getting into the yoga as uh, to transform themselves and to do some service for the society. The special children has a lot of challenges, area of special needs for the special children has a lot of challenges. So let us be the top bearers for these students. And one more sutra from Sadhana Pada. Tapas Swadhyaya Ishwara Pranidhanani Kriya Yoga. The yoga must reduce both the physical and mental impurities. It must develop our capacity for self-examination 
and help us to understand that in the final analysis, we are not the masters of everything we do. If the practice of yoga does not help us to remove the symptoms and the causes of our physical and mental problems, it cannot lead us on to discovering our inner selves and therefore does not facilitate our understanding of the nature and quality of actions. In such circumstances, the practice will be of doubtful validity. The more we refine ourselves through yoga, the more we realize that our actions need to be re-examined systematically and that we must not take the fruits of our action for granted. So this too sutras you can go through and maybe have your reflection on that so this attitude will give us a lot of perseverance patience in addressing the needs for special children and finally the disclaimer part uh, these are the views uh, adapted from our gurus and I may err in expressing their ideas, and I'm solely responsible for the errors and express my regret, if any. And I thank Damuru on behalf of KYM for this opportunity. Thanks, ma'am. So thank you, sir. And um, thank you for this. Uh, unfolding of this whole canvas you took us through the whole journey and uh, somewhere while in your discussion you talked about compassion but i can see that even in your presentation you've taken care of all the aspects and gradually led us through how to deal with this population uh, maybe if your permission is there i could go with a couple of questions that you've received if that is okay for you Sure, ma'am. Please go ahead. So, uh, so you have been working and meeting children with various conditions. Some are psychological, neurological, some physical, uh, and you also had listed down the conditions that you generally commonly come across. Uh, what would be the time ranges? Like, is it a kind of? I know it will depend and change from child to child, but on an on an average, like you've been working for some years. Or is it a lifetime kind of a thing or some time frame that you work with? Um, uh, see, it, uh, as um, you rightly said, uh, it depends upon the student to student and uh, the uh, degree of uh, 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 conditions they are in. Like, um, especially when I said uh, classification for the first category where uh, you are not so sure about the cause your, and your symptoms are there. Uh, and uh, uh, the symptoms are being, uh, you can visually see, but uh, the description is from the parents or the caregivers. So there is always a gap. Uh, a gap is there when you deal with the special children, with the particularly the autism sort of thing. You are not able to get into the real cause factor of the things. Like. So... Uh, uh, the first portion is the engagement part of it so that the student gets into the trust portion and then he starts working with you. So the trust portion taking that, it will take a month's time or two months' time initially. Even at times uh, three months also. So uh, this we have to wait. But once the trust is created, then you can work on the small, small, small angles and bring it a progression will happen. And uh, as I have been uh, uh, citing and one uh, student uh, where uh, maybe uh, after one year or one and a half years, uh, uh, parents started, I mean, uh, sharing this sort of Tirupati experience, which was, uh, 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 I mean, for a student in that sort of uh, spectrum to be in Tirupati in, in queue for quite some time without any transference, without any sound. Uh, uh, so he was able to adapt. So that is a very good uh, thing that and gives a lot of uh, uh, optimism in dealing with sort of uh, similar students. Like, yes, uh, some network can be built in, like, yes. So uh, when you mention about parents, uh, it's equally challenging as much for the child as much for the caregivers, your parents. So, so uh, when you deal with such children at Mitra, uh, do you also have some 
form of interventions for the parents, uh, like counseling or I don't know, some practices that you actually give them as well? Yeah. Um, see, uh, normally uh, for this first category, again, uh, the child is not uh, sometimes expressing the pain with the symptoms. Uh, it is not like the second category, like uh, we express the pain. We say yes, uh, here, there, and you can work on. But here, uh, the seeker or the student doesn't have the intention or the interest uh, to express that I want a change like. So it's a little bit difficult. So the problem or the issue of the children's or the students has been uh, transferred to the parents or the caregivers. If, if they are not so aware, they are into that sort of symptoms. So you can see the symptoms happening there. And uh, it is equally challenging for us to deal with them also. So we take it very cautiously, class by class. Sometimes inside the class, we allow them to be in the therapy so that they get a little bit of positive or wrong. Uh, things happening in the class with the student, with the teacher. Ah, this is good. Something is, uh, they are not seen uh, before. Uh, something is happening here. And uh, that slowly, they also change. But immediately when they go out, uh, something happens. So that expectation has been now. Uh, it's, it's, it's difficult. The expectation is uh, there. They come with a lot of expectations. So we are we have to be very practical in conveying the messages. Yes, we are trying, and it is all. Uh, I mean, uh, with all good faith, uh, hope we are trying. That message is very important, not a very hard and fast like, but in a way for the different parent, we have to make the things happen like that. So that one point of time, they appreciate this approach, <laughs> basically. They appreciate the approach of uh, uh, this thing so that something has hit them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I have to see this. Uh, yes, it is like this. Let me try, manage, and uh, let me also have some hope. Even small change. Yes, it is good for us. Let us build on that. Like, yes. So, little bit of hand holding for them is also very important. It means a lot to them because. For them yeah. also things are very challenging at times. Yes, yes, yes. So, uh, also because uh, like you mentioned, these children could also be going to other forms of uh, yes. therapies or interventions. Yeah. So, yeah. how do we integrate yoga practices along with this conjunct uh, therapies that these children uh, Yeah, see, basically we don't uh, discourage or uh, say a checklist of what, what are the other therapies they are doing. We don't uh, normally get into those things, but um, uh, and uh, we can't also say that you don't go to that. You only do this because wherever they can get some results, you know, that is uh, that is what is more important. So let them try. But people are watching. I mean, uh, they are also observing our sort of uh, interventions, and if they feel this is giving them a uh, better I, or uh, they are handling better. Then people, I mean, uh, uh, they come here and I would say that it is uh, a whole uh, a sort of uh, three, four, uh, five uh, type of uh, interventions, which this, uh, the, uh, I mean, the results are happening. Occupational therapy is also is one uh, place where uh, a lot of, uh, um, we can get some uh, results there. They're all depending upon the clinical diagnosis. Like. So uh, in our case in yoga, we uh, we get into the jargons of the scientific things, uh, uh, but how far you can go, uh, uh, you, uh, there is a limitation. Otherwise, you have to go do the MBBS or something like that, a spe specialization. And if you are able to do that, uh, you, why, why are you here? So uh, know the jargons, what does it mean? But for us, it is the spine or it is how they look and how they the uh, symptoms. Uh, on the gross and start working. So the when we when we that's what I'm saying. We have to take take all this sort of uh, things in a common platform, so that uh, the needy are also addressed. So now now we are seeing the needy like the special childrens, the parents, caregivers are not so much taken into the inclusive part of it. Like so, it has been addressed in a way that uh, with lot of dogmas and. Uh, 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 
yes, justification we have to give. But who uh, who is going to begin? Who is going to start this? So that someone has to start. Yes, something will happen later. Some, but that is. There might be a lot of challenges actually when you do these kind of interventions. Every case will bring about a unique challenge to itself. Yes. Uh, yes. So uh, popularly when we talk about yoga and yoga teachers, so now I'm coming to the teachers or the uh, caregivers. So, uh, you know, we have these popular categories of yoga for this, yoga for that, or yoga for corporates, yoga for pregnant women, yoga for women, very less people are working actually for, uh, with yogic practices, uh, with uh, children of the special population. So um, how to inspire or motivate more yoga teachers to contribute towards this? And another important question is that I might be motivated to do that, but uh, what kind of special training or special uh, additional learning or shift in approach is required? to address such population. Okay. So uh, basically, uh, the yoga, when uh, as a yoga practitioner, uh, our uh, uh, maybe uh, the goal, short time goal and the uh, short time goals could be there. But you see the long time goal is for the spiritual transformation. So uh, uh, without that, uh, it is not yoga. That is how I think our, uh, not think uh, our Krishnamacharya sir uh, would have uh, uh, a Take in the yoga lecture. So that is the that is the uh, goal. Um, and in yoga text, if you see Yoga Sutra, Hatha Yoga Pratipika, or Yoga Rahasya, whatever, uh, that it talks about the practitioner and his discipline and uh, the practice, practice, practice. So the practice, you know, as he goes through this thing, he is able to. Uh, uh, acquire some associated uh, benefits also, like you see uh, the healing benefits. It could be a healing benefit. Uh, it could be some uh, healing benefits in terms of uh, just by that, uh, just by being there or by talking to them. Uh, this sort of things can happen. But most of the text or the guru are talking about the practice. So the yoga teachers, we, me you or the students who are willing to take up yoga, the more emphasis is on the practice of yoga for them. Uh, taking, uh, because uh, the, uh, the cleansing process is there. Once the transformation is there, then the presence itself gives you the lot of healing. See, that is how you see Ramakrishna Paramahamsa, you see Ramana, Jesus, uh, you just wait for the Darshan and people people wait for the darshan and by just seeing them, yeah, there is some clarity. So uh, it is basically the teachers, the instrument uh, which is going to, I mean, which is the instrument. Uh, uh, the practice should be uh, the area of importance, the personal practice. So so that that instrument that our body or the mind or whatever you say, that instrument uh, uh, is uh, really uh, getting some sort of maintenance and uh, able to do something for themselves. That is uh, the final goal of uh, transformation, spiritual, and in between associated things, which can be shared to the society in a way, in a right way. So the goal is spiritual. And the students should be more particular about the practice. So only that personal practice will reflect in the uh, sort of, uh, it could be a therapy or it could be a counseling, it could be a healing section or it could be a uh, imparting asana practice or whatever it is. So it's a, uh, it, it is something like we observe ourselves as one more uh, uh, other thing. Right? So And we have to keep it uh, as good as possible. It's not so easy. I, or like uh, when you say it's not easy it's because of human <laughs> there is a flux you think some, some some days are very beautiful some days you are very up some days you are down but let us keep our gurus krishnamacharya and god always try to keep them with us and keep the motivation going and do the practice 
uh, like what they have been practical no like uh, you beautifully summarized it of what is the core essential that is required uh, but at the other front where you are uh, so you mentioned about the sunday mitra clinics every sunday there's a clinic that you hold or the practices that you do is there a possibility for teachers to come and do an internship or just practice along or does mitra offer that kind of a thing um see uh, basically kvm uh, our krishna macharya uh, is uh, uh, guru dakshina was uh, healing uh, for us uh, guru uh, healing is the uh, aspect of so he imparted that that was his contribution like so the therapy it means it starts from i want uh, uh, though it is a special children's for sunday it is a, a, a degree of a sort of a therapy session like you have a normal therapy where you have a headache you have a shoulder pain you have a neck pain you have a stress you have bp you have di- diabetic you do that and uh, here people have started i mean a quite long time uh taking some templates doing some research trying to apply that becoming a teacher with the guidance you do that so slowly it will happen i mean it is happening for uh, special children also slowly it is happening for special children also so there is a uh, 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 always a sort of uh, mechanism where uh, teachers who are uh, interested can be a part of learning or can be a part of caregiver or uh, sort of uh, imparting therapy also you know uh, in a man uh, in a uh, possible way like whatever uh, they can impart but it, it, it can ha- it should happen you know so that uh, it is not something where uh, the challenges are huge it is big uh, you can't do anything uh, yes science says that uh, you, uh, there is nothing you can't do it. Uh, my one of my friend uh, student is a special child uh, after doing a uh, lot of uh, uh, diagnosis everything uh, uh, therapy finally they said uh, no this is not possible to cure one simple one sentence Uh, that so he got uh, the uh, finally uh, i mean the parents thing that is what they uh, that is not the expected thing yeah uh, that is not the expected thing so uh, what what uh, so this is where uh, the sensitivity of handling things is there you know we are going to die one day <laughs> you can't keep yeah. telling you are going to die, you are going to die <laughs> So there is a small ray of hope or a little bit of uh, improvement in their behavior. Yeah. That also means a lot to the parents. So the way you tell, how you tell, all that comes in the practice. That is where the compassion. I am talking. We are talking about the, the some all. There are a lot of words. And when I put a uh, one only one slide with a picture like God, faith, and Guru, and lot of bubbles like that. Now. So uh, one word has some significant meaning. each words like compassion as that sort of thing when you say there is no end there is no end if you people are working for i don't know i want to live longer i want i want i want to live longer there should not be end for me so compassion gives you that yeah compassion uh, it uh, you don't have you don't get into the pain concept at all when you are in the compassion uh, ground and start working so that is a very so, important shift yeah it it's a uh, uh, that is all like so that understanding that word getting into that and get making it up a, a, a experience like uh, we may not be uh, to that day, but we can have some example like jesus also i would like to you know uh, apart from the other religion other things like um, you will see the compassion uh, you will bleed you will you will get crucified but if you <laughs> afraid of that uh, uh i mean uh, you're not able to bring a transformation so this is one way of transformation and giving yourself and uh, in that process you are not in there you are very it's clear that you are not in in that process you are in the process but you are not in the pain or sort of process like so you are always there you are reborn whatever you say so you are there for the next challenge next day the journey 
it's a journey it's a journey so compassion gives you that sort of uh, uh, sort of thing needed and uh, the special needs children needs lot of compassion sure yeah. so uh, thank you so much one for sharing your time and sharing this uh, thing with us but more than that i feel very thankful that for more than uh, almost a decade you are working with these children compassionately and tirelessly uh, it's amazing and uh, we wish more people like you deal with that segment of society it really needs our attention and a yeah. little bit of compassion like you said yeah. so thank you so much thank you for sharing sir namaskar thank you thank you thank you for the opportunity and thank you you especially for allotting i mean giving some time for the special children and uh, their cause and the difficulties uh, so that we take them into the inclusive part that is the thing it should be like something like a, i can just like it should be like a headache or a, a knee pain yes but somewhere we have to take them into inclu that, that should be some sort of working needed on the uh, Definitely, it becomes yeah. like a forgotten section of society. We just ignore it or turn a neglect. Neglect. And uh, it is uh, more heavy, heavy on the parents and the caregivers uh, and the, um, the schools or the institutes who are dealing with. It's a really a. Uh, it's not sufficient. That's what I would say. In that in that way, you have done a very great job in uh, allowing, giving us some time. to express their difficulties and their limitation as well as uh, uh, they are also a part of human they would like to be in the system with dignity with respect and with safety so compensation work has to be given even yes, not the, and and things are now gradually changing so uh, there are more people getting more interest in these kind yeah, of things so, and know yeah. more about it get into it so thank you so Wish much you for sharing and this yeah. more power to you to keep doing these things and uh, your your, your uh, i mean the teacher programs uh, if the students are really looking for challenges uh, that is my intention to tell them there are huge challenges here people can really come and try experiment and do some sort of i mean good service there's a huge challenge to a billing this is the place right? in your teachers thank you. thanks madam thanks thank you. thanks thank you. for that a very warm welcome today uh, we are very very excited to announce teacher training program at damru this teacher training is happening at damru in collaboration with krishnamacharya yoga mandiram so i'm so happy to invite ms nritya jagannathan she is the director of kym institute of yoga studies and i just hand over to her because she is the best person to explain you what exactly we are getting into श्री गुरुभ्यो नम नमस्कार ऑन दिस ओकेशन ऑफ डमरूज एनिवर्सरी गिव्स मी ग्रेट जॉय टू अनाउंस ऑन बिहाफ ऑफ द के वाई एम द अपकमिंग योगा टीचर ट्रेनिंग सर्टिफिकेट प्रोग्राम ऑफर्ड बाय द कृष्णमाचार्य योग मंदिर इन कोलैबोरेशन विद डमरू स्टूडियोज अहमदाबाद दिस इज द फर्स्ट टाइम दैट दिस very intensive teacher training course comes to the western part of india at ahmedabad as many of you may be well aware the krishnamacharya yoga mandir is a world renowned center founded by shri tikave deskacha in 1976 as a tribute to his father teacher and legendary yogi shri krishnamacharya 
founded as primarily a center for yoga therapy. Over the years, the KYM also has acquired fairly solid reputation for its training programs, both in yoga studies as also healing chants, as these are fundamental even to the process of application of yoga tools. In this context, Krishnamacharya Yoga Mandiram and Damaru come together to offer you this 800-hour yoga teacher training program. 800 hours is inclusive of both the classroom and non-classroom hours, including personal study, project preparations, assignments, observation, internship, and so on. This program follows a syllabus that has been designed by the Academic Council of KY, following very closely the guidelines laid down by Sri T. Kavideskacha when he first conceived this program. The syllabus includes a very deep study of the classical techniques of asana, classical techniques of pranayama, the theory of asana, the fundamental theoretical principles of asana, modifications of asanas to suit people of different capabilities, theory and practice of dhyana, apart from which there is also certain associated study such as the history and evolution of yoga, a deep study of the Yoga Sutra of Patanjali covering all four chapters of the text, an exposure to other yoga literature such as the Hatha Yoga Pradipika, the Bhagavad Gita, the Yoga Rahasya and the Yoga Yagnya Valkya Samhita. Apart from this, students will go through a study in certain allied subjects in every module of the training, fundamentals of anatomy and physiology, fundamentals of Ayurveda, and also an introduction to psychology. Apart from this, chanting of the Yoga Sutra will also be an integral part of the study modules. Now, this course requires, uh, unlike many other short-term courses, is designed to run for a period of about 18 months in the hybrid mode. A big part of the learning will happen with teachers from the KYM teaching in person at Damru Studio Ahmedabad with a portion of the subjects also being conducted online. Through the process of every module of training, there will be ongoing assessments, evaluations, discussions and so on, culminating in a graduation where you will be certified, those who graduate will be certified as yoga teachers in the tradition of the Krishnamacharya Yoga Mandiram. The Krishnamacharya Yoga Mandiram is one of the leading yoga institutes of India recognized by the Yoga Certification Board under the Ministry of Ayush. And this level of training, this 800-hour teacher training course, will prepare students to be able to take the Level 3 exam of the Yoga Certification Board. Also, this program is eligible to be recognized under the 500-hour advanced certificate program of the Indian Yoga Association as well. And with these words, I would like to invite those of you who are interested in a deep, serious study of yoga philosophy, yoga psychology, its practice and its application from a very reputed tradition, one that has that has that is known the world over, to go through this process which not only helps you to qualify yourself as a, as a yoga teacher, as a teacher of yoga from a very reputed tradition, it can also offer much uh, by way of reflective uh, food for thought, offering a way to reflect on to understand various life processes, to understand how the mind works, and through this understanding, to integrate the philosophy into our living, so to effect uh, an overall transformation in our lives itself. And here I speak for so many hundreds of students 
both Indian and international, who have gone through this training and who have benefited greatly from the value that this program can bring to you both professionally and personally. For further details, please do reach out to Mauli Babiskar, who will be coordinating with us in running the course at Damru. And uh, with these words, I take your leave and we look forward to having a very good uh, registration for this program that the KYM is offering for the very first time at Ahmedabad. Thank you so much. Namaskar. Thank you, ma'am. Gujarat welcomes the Krishnavatarya Yoga Mandiram. The privilege is ours. A very ancient parampara is coming to this part of India. And I urge all of you to take advantage of that, to get into an in-depth exploration of the yogic studies. All our contact details are there in the description box. D-A-M-A-R-U, www.damaru.in is our website. Realm of Damru is our handle on Facebook, Instagram, and you will get all the details. So do reach out and register because Another aspect of uh, this tradition is that we do not take trainings or trainees in large numbers. So there's a very limited amount of seats that we are offering for this training so that we could get deeply involved. So get in touch and see you on the other side. Thank you.